Now I want to talk a little bit more about water heaters, how they work, and how to repair them. And I know these things can be a little bit intimidating. They're big. They're expensive. You may not have any idea what's going on inside there, and they're absolutely vital to your family's happiness and to your health if you don't get the dang thing fixed. Well, first off, we have the outer skin. Then you have a layer of insulation and then the inner tank. Now the inner tank is probably the only thing on this water heater that is built tough and made the last and that's because it has to undergo very strict safety requirements. If you notice here on the side of your tank you'll see a sticker from Underwriters Laboratory. This tank has been tested at 300 psi and is designed to work at 150 psi so there's a lot of overkill there. Also, these tanks are lined with a glass or something to prevent corrosion. Also, to prevent corrosion is the anode rod, sometimes called the sacrificial anode rod because it will corrode through a process called electrolysis. It corrodes faster than the tank, thus preserving the life of the tank. The steel core is all that remains of this anode rod. If you look towards the back here, you'll see another structure. This is your dip tube. Water enters the top of the tank through your cold water nipple. It travels all the way down through the dip tube and comes out the bottom of the, the tank. And it actually comes out through these holes right here on the dip tube. This dip tube is obviously shot. But the cold water at the bottom of the tank is heated up in the water heater and the very hottest water rises to the top and goes out the hot water exit nipple. When the dip tubes get bad like this, the cold water coming into the tank mixes directly with the hot water leaving the tank and then you don't get very hot water. This right here is your upper heating element. It comes on first and heats the water from here on up. There's also a lower heating element that comes on second and uh, it's buried beneath all this sediment and it's burned out and rendered useless but it heats the water from the bottom of the tank up to the top. Now let's look at this sediment a little bit and it's normally in big chunks and stuff but this has been sitting around and all dried out but you can bust it up in your hands pretty easily it's not like a bunch of cement or anything but the one remaining fact is that this stuff is extremely hard to get out of your tank. Flushing just simply doesn't work and other methods of cleaning are extremely labor intensive and uh, here's why flushing doesn't work. Down here at the bottom of your tank you'll see your drain valve. Now I've removed the drain valve and I just want to show you the hole here. It only has a 5 16 inch hole in this drain valve and there is just no way the sediment is coming out through here. But the turbo tank cleaner is a tool engineered to remove all this sediment quickly and efficiently and it goes in through your drain valve hole right here and it'll remove all that pretty quick. Now let's go up to the top of the tank. This is your cold water nipple and you can see the top of the dip tube assembly right here and uh, when the dip tubes go bad you just pull this nipple out and replace the uh, dip tube and everything. And this is your hot water exit nipple and you can see the top of the anode rod assembly here and uh, to replace your anode rod you just pull this nipple out and replace both of that. This is a, a pressure relief valve. It'll pop open when the pressure or temperature in your tank becomes too great and uh, it protects your tank from overpressurization. And these will leak sometimes, they'll get a little sediment or something in them and you just tap on the stem right here with a hammer and a lot of times you can get them to reseal but if not you just replace this valve and it's pretty easy to do that. These are your electrical feed lines. Now your water heater will run on a 30 amp 220 breaker and each one of these lines will have 110 volts in it and it'll be, in the, it'll be out of phase with each other. The power comes down here to your upper thermostat and it enters right here. There's a reset button on your upper thermostat and if the temperature or, or amperage becomes too great it'll trip your thermostat right here. There's also uh, a place where you can adjust your temperature right here. 
Now, if you find that you have to keep resetting your thermostat all the time, you've got other problems. And it's either, there could be from um, bad electrical connections that are heating up and causing this thing to fry or trip, or it could be a bad element. Um, so just, you could just replace both of that and that'll cure that problem. Now, the power from this line right here will come out right here at this terminal. And this terminal is hot all the time. It's got two wires coming off of it. Each wire goes to an element. So each element will have 110 volts on it. The power from this line will come out either right here or right here. This terminal right here is T2 and uh, it'll give power to the um, upper element. So if the top of your tank is cold, the power comes out this terminal, goes to your upper element, and heats the top part of your tank. Now if the top part is hot, it shuts this off and puts the power onto this terminal, which sends it downstairs to the bottom part of your water heater. I just want to make a quick note that Normally, the T2 uh, terminal is, is over here on the left side, but on this, this one, it's, it's on the right for some reason, but this is T4, and it always feeds your lower element. So you come down here to the, the lower thermostat, and if your tank is cold, this thing will send the power down to your lower element, and it'll heat the water from the top up, from the bottom to the top. And that's really all the parts of a water heater. Now I want to talk a little bit about repair. The first situation, you don't have any hot water whatsoever. All you have to do is replace your upper thermostat and your upper element. Make sure your breaker and everything's good and the wire connections are good and that should solve your problem. Now the second situation is if you have hot water but you run out really quickly, just replace these two things at the bottom of your water heater, your lower thermostat and your lower element, and clean out the sediment for sure at the bottom of your tank, and that'll solve your problem. And in both of these situations, it's probably most likely going to be your elements that are bad, but they recommend replacing them anyway. Now the parts to, clean, to uh, repair your water heater are relatively inexpensive, they're sold virtually everywhere, they're easy to replace, so if your tank isn't leaking, there should be no reason to replace it.